Hey guys, Matt Pistol, and uh, I'm doing this video to show you that I've uh, developed a new circuit design. Now, this is mainly designed to be a primary circuit um, when you start a, uh, a switchboard of some sort. This would be the first key lock. So what we have here is the primary circuit, and then we have the uh, we have the primary circuit, which when it's activated, uh, it sends a signal through here. But then you notice there are two other things, and so why do we have these pistons here? Well, the simple answer is that you can uh, you can push the button, and it will turn the switch on and off. And because we can do that now, um, basically it defeats the purpose of a um, of a lever. You can just have a button. So let me show you. So right now it's in the off position. So let's set it to on. On is going to push this one forward. And what that will do, well, I'll, let's just let's just press a button and I'll explain what happened. Here we go. Alright, so all three pistons moved. Now here's what happened. This one moved forward, so now this one's active. Now that's going to go to the, uh, that's going to go to lock two. It's going to disable lock two if there's another, uh, if there's another switch out there. Now what happened here? Well, first, this piston retracted. So now we, we can no longer power this one. So that one is um that one's no longer powered. But this piston over here uh extended. So thereby completing that circuit. So now basically what happens is based on some very clever timing we've done with uh piston repeaters where we have to actually slow the signal down towards the end uh in order to avoid it um refiring. Uh we now have uh, an off switch. So we'll move it back to the off position. Let me show you. This is going to move all three pistons again. There you go. All three have again been moved. Now these two right here are stickies. So because they're stickies, you can um, they only are actuated by one piston each. This one right here, these are not uh, stickies. These are just actuated by the um, these are just actuated by uh, two different pistons. The reason we did that is because we can do an uh, input from here and then we can also do an input which is a reset. So that's one of the, my signature designs. Is, uh, you've got basically a button that functions as an input for the transistor. Then you have another button that functions as a reset. And I'm about to show you um, how I've applied this technology. But okay, so right now it's in the off position. Let's turn it on. There you go. So now, basically what this has done is this has started a channel towards the reset piston. And in this case, the master reset, because of the, others, uh, the other designs that I have. If this one is reset, every single one of them after it is reset too, uh, because it's all turned off. So, alright, so we're going to push it again, and now it's going to reset. And there you go. Let's reset again. Alright, let's go see this over here. I showed you some stuff yesterday. I showed you the the building that we did. I haven't really changed much to it. It's really the same thing. I just tweaked some timings. But here, here's what I've changed. So we did, there's the four stage right here. Very complex, very difficult to kind of follow. Not uh, and it's I mean it was kind of an aberration, an aberration, just uh, ab absolutely horrid trying to re uh, trying to put that back together. So I decided this morning to set out and make a more simple design. And as you can see, it looks complex, but it's actually uh, a good bit sim a good bit simpler. And that is not by accident. Uh this one is um it, it every single one of them except for the initial piston, which the uh, the initial design is right here. Uh, it looks exactly like the one I just showed you. But then all the others right here, you've got two, then you've got three, then you've got four, and then you've got the fifth and final one. Notice something about that? There we go. There's four. There's three. There's two. All right, so two through five are exactly the same. And that is not by accident. And they are designed to be identical. And I did that uh, on purpose because I have come up with a new circuit design um, that actually makes it so that I don't have to go through and 
guess and check every single one of the combinations. Instead, all I have to do is create the piston design and it checks everything for me. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's do this. The code is 2, 1, 4, 5, 3, or in this case, counterclockwise plus, uh, plus center. So let's go ahead and, and do this. So we're going to hit number 1. Now, number 1 is active, just like we saw over there. Now, because of that, the lock on number 2 is no longer active, so number 2 can now be activated. Um, beyond that, there's nothing really special about it. Well, what did happen, um, which I didn't show you over there, is that as soon as number one activated, it activated it. Uh, it uh, it pulled this uh, transistor back, this diamond back. So that way, uh, the reset sequence for number two is now disabled. So number two no longer resets everything. Now, what's interesting about this is that everything else one has a reset sequence, three has a reset sequence right there see there's the reset sequence right there four has a reset sequence there it is right there and five has a reset sequence and because they all have reset sequences it means that if you press anything but two it resets the circuit or the whatever the next number is next number is one so let's press let's press one all right so now let's look at it again so one still has the same now two is changed now that two is active um, that has changed the, the state of this one right here, uh, which basically makes the reset sequence on uh, the second switch active now. So if I press that button again, it's going to reset it. But now we've come over here and we've unlocked three, and it's also disabled the reset sequences on the third switch. And that's the way it is all the way down, the reset sequences. Now there's one other thing that I'm particularly proud of. Well, we're going to go ahead and complete the sequence. Uh, three more buttons. One, two, three. There we go. It's complete. Now here's the cool part. The other one, I had no way of keeping the other buttons from not working, because if you just pressed, if you pressed uh, number one, it would reset the entire sequence. Two, three, and four didn't really do much, but uh, if you press number one, it would reset the entire sequence back to one. Um, and that was kind of a that was kind of a fault. I mean, it was not exactly smart. But, um, so what did I do here? I created a lockout mechanism. So here it is. This is the final sequence, um, and the output is right here. But I bridged off from the output uh, to create what I call a lockout sequence. What this basically means is the circuits that line all five of these circuits heading in are now cut off. So you, they're no longer active. So as you can see, that one right there, that's going to be to the fifth switch. That one is not active. Uh, let's see, where's the fourth one? There's the fourth one. That one's not active. The third switch, that one's not active. Second switch, that one's not active. And then the first switch, not active. As long as those circuits aren't complete, these buttons right here are useless. I can press them all day, all night. They're not going to do anything because they are not completing a circuit at all. But as soon as I press the reset uh, sequence, and there we go. Every bit of it has been reset. And what's so cool about these is that it's set up for a chain reaction type event. Um, a lot of designs that I've seen like this before have employed tactics where everything is hardwired into one, uh, like one master switch and that master switch goes and systematically triggers every single one of them. Well, this one's not. This one actually uses a little bit different technique. If um, if you reset it, it reset. It only resets number one, and because number one uh, resets, it locks number two, which locks number three, which locks number four, which locks number five. It checks every single one of them. And that's what makes it so unique. Also, if you reset it again, it locks one, two, three, four, five, and because it cuts off once uh, five is locked, it cuts off the final sequence, which reactivates every single one of these um, these lines. It really is a very awesome switch. 
The only thing I haven't done so far is made it programmable, and that is my next step, is to find a way to make a five-digit switch that is programmable. That means on the fly you can change each of the um you can change each of the numbers and what they do. So hopefully next time I upload a video, um that's what it's gonna be about. Um this one actually didn't take me long. This one took me about a couple hours, if not less. Um and that was troubleshooting the initial circuit design that I had and then implementing everything. And once that was done there was really no troubleshooting. It was just setting timings correctly and here it is. Picture perfect. Anyway, this is Mad Pistol. Uh you know, feel free to um, send me any comments, send me PMs about questions about this device. Uh, I actually have a schematic of it, um, so I'd, I'd have to redo it now because I made some changes to it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.